If you know that the zodiacal constellations are all on the ecliptic, then you will realize that they all rise in the east in more or less the same part of the sky. When I went out to take a picture of Cancer, I knew that it would follow Gemini, and I knew more or less where I expected it to be. But I could not find it. So here is why it was hard for me to find Cancer, and some tips so that you can next time you want to go out and, you know, look at the night sky. So January and February are, in my opinion, the best months to see Cancer the Crab. Although it will stick around clear until June, after which it will descend into the sunset and make its way into the daytime sky. Anyway, January and February are my preference to observe Cancer because during those months it is just rising in the eastern horizon at the beginning of the night. So in later months, by the time it gets dark, Cancer will already be higher in the sky. I like to do most of my stargazing by looking into the low east for two reasons. It's low, so I don't have to strain my neck as much looking up, and that's where the new constellations appear as the Earth rotates and orbits the Sun. I found that that's a pretty good way to gradually learn the sky. Since there are so many constellations, I pick two or three each month to learn, and by the next month there will be new ones in the same part of the sky. So, you know, there's a little learning management tip if you're new to the constellations. I should add, though, that faint stars will be easier to see when they're directly overhead because there's less atmospheric interference. In other words, the light doesn't have to go through as much atmosphere to get to your eye. Okay, so let's talk about Cancer. Cancer is Latin for crab, which, as a side note, is the same root that those scary tumors get their name from. Cancer tumors can sometimes look like a crab because of the swollen veins around the growing mass that resemble, you know, the limbs of a crab. You're welcome to do a Google image search if you would like, but I am not making that mistake again. <laughs> it's, not, it's not pretty. <clears throat> All right, the most common star pattern for this constellation looks like an upside down Y consisting of five stars. This is how the pattern is defined by the International Astronomical Union. And although I have seen at least one other pattern, I think this one will make a good basis for my sketch. Granted, I can almost more see a lobster in that shape, which is another common depiction of Cancer, but, but I'll stick with a crab for my drawing. Now, remember how I couldn't find Cancer when I went out to take my first picture of the constellation? Well, it turns out that Cancer is one of the dimmest zodiacal constellations in the sky, second only to Pisces. To see it, you'll really need a moonless sky, no clouds, of course, minimal light pollution, and some time for your eyes to adjust to the dark. So here's the first picture I took, I was, it was basically a blind shot, so yeah, I didn't even get close to centering it in the frame, as you can see. After some trial and error, I got this picture. To find Cancer, I recommend first looking for Gemini. These two bright stars here are the brightest stars in that constellation, Castor and Pollux, and for finding them, you can check out my previous video where I talk about Gemini. These two bright stars over in this direction you will also see in the same area, that is Canis Minor. To find Cancer, look east of these constellations and look for pretty dim stars in the shape of a Y. If conditions are good, you should be able to see about five stars, maybe even this star cluster here. So there are some of the lines to help you out. If you can find Gemini and Canis Minor, you'll be looking in this area for Cancer, this Y here. Um, but again, they will be pretty dim stars. So it, it'll, be, it'll take some practice and definitely have good conditions to look for it. First, let's talk about this star. This is called Beta Cancri. Um, this is the Latin term for it. This name follows what is called a Bayer designation, which is, um, you know, named after the scientist who came up with this process. So the first part of it, Beta, is the second letter in the Greek alphabet. Alpha, Beta, Delta, Gamma, so on. And then the second part of it is basically just a a rewritten form of the word Cancer. So the stars within each constellation will be named after the constellation, but the noun will be rephrased a little bit. This is what's called a genitive case. Basically, it's rewording a noun so that you know it um, derives from a different noun, but I mean, it basically looks the same. I don't really know why they rename it this way, but that's what they do. Now, the application of the Greek alphabet to these stars usually goes in order more or less of the brightest stars. So Alpha Cancri would generally be the brightest star in this case. And I noticed as I've been studying the stars 
that, tw not 12, but 6, half of the zodiacal constellations actually break this rule. So you'll see that Beta will actually be the brightest star of the constellation, and that is the case here. Beta Cancri is Cancer's brightest star, and is also, ironically, the farthest away of the brighter five stars that you see here. This particular star is 290 light years away, and it is also a binary star system, which is exactly what it sounds like. It is where you, it looks from here to be one star, but it is actually two stars locked in orbit with each other, um, and that isn't all that uncommon. This star here is Delta Cancri. It is 136 light years away. This star has a very interesting Babylonian name. The Babylonian name is actually the longest of all known star names. Um, and it, it's interesting because stars oftentimes get named different things by different cultures and at different times, so stars will have more than one name. The Babylonian name is, and I quote, let's see if I can do this, Arkushananga Roshashatu. <laughs> that was close enough, as good as I'll get. Um, this star also has a Latin name, and pardon my pronunciation here, Asilius Australis, which basically means southern donkey. The star up here is called Asilis Borealis, meaning northern donkey. Nearby Delta Cancri, we have a star that is called X Cancri, not to be confused with Chi Cancri, which also looks like an X, but is the Latin alphabet. According to the app, in the information, it says that this is, X Cancri is the reddest star in the sky. Um, that's according to Starwalk 2, and it's near Delta Cancri. So if you can find it, it should look pretty red, but it's also very, very dim. So um, let me know if you can find it. That would be interesting. I, I haven't yet. Moving on, we have Messier 44. Messier. Or M44 for short. That is, of course, named after Charles Messier. Messier. The astronomer who cataloged this. And, by the way, if I zoom in on this photograph that I took, my exposure is such that you can actually see this, this um, open star cluster. So that's pretty cool. This is also called the Beehive Cluster, and it is 515 light years away. This one is also known as Priesipi, which is Latin for manger. The reason for this name was that the ancient Greeks and Romans saw this object as a manger from which the two donkeys, the adjacent stars, which I mentioned earlier, are eating. So as I go, you know, manger and... I don't know why I felt the need to explain that. I think I already said that enough. Okay, great. M67 is another star cluster, and it is found near Cancer's Pincer, near this star here. But this one is much harder to see, and it's also much farther away, almost 3,000 light years. They are also um, very old stars. They are red stars, which don't shine as bright. So this is also very hard to see, but it is there. So that is the most interesting things... Um, to me about this constellation. It is very fun to learn about and even though it's hard to see it is fun to look for and to see if you can find you know the star cluster M44 and such. So let's do a quick recap. We have Beta Cancri. It is the farthest star of the constellation yet the brightest star. Delta Cancri also has a Babylonian name which is the longest star name. It is 136 light years away and it is nearby X Cancri. This is the reddest star in the night sky, but it is very difficult to see, very dim. M44, also called the Beehive Cluster, is also named Priesipi, and this is Latin for manger. And lastly, the star cluster M67. This is 3,000 light years away, and yet is the closest, oldest star cluster in our galaxy. Now you know. I hope you like the art. This one was uh, pretty fun to do. I tried various different drafts. Um, and the one that ended, I, I think, turned out pretty good. Um, maybe not my favorite of the drawings I've done so far, but that's okay. It was fun to do. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you're excited for the next one, because I sure am. In a couple weeks, or as soon as I can get the video done, we will be doing a Leo the constellation for the lion. And between now and then, there may be some other videos that I do. So stick around if you want to see that fun stuff. Thanks for joining me, and please, have a good day, and remember to smile.